Hey there, it's Sunday morning and I just released the video, well, a little while ago anyway, on making some 3D printed things. I bought a 3D printer a little over a month ago and I've been basically obsessed with it <laughs> ever since, uh, you know, designing and printing different things just to learn mainly that was the thrust you could say this month to learn the machine what it can do and in particular to learn a better CAD program than the one I've been using. I was using SketchUp. SketchUp is is okay you can do things with SketchUp but it's really limited in, in what you can do especially the one that I'm using which is the version 8 which is like 13 years old now or something. So I'm using that because I made plans with it and it's the last free version that you can use for commercial purposes. I didn't want to get in trouble. Anyway, so free CAD is what I'm using and learning and that's free because it's right there in the name and you can use it for anything you want to use it for, including things like this which I think is very neat. This is my compact compass that I designed and made, I don't know, around 10 years ago or more, except a wooden version with a bent over finish nail epoxied in to use as the, uh, the pivot point and a, a, a wing nut I used in the last, in that one. But this one has um, all 3D printed parts except for this push pin, which is a much better uh, pivot point. And it locks with a cam like that. It can really lock it tight and it doesn't move. So there's that. I also made, well, this is like the th third version of this one. Uh, this is my no snag sanding block. This is a, a woodworking project that I'm going to be doing fairly soon. I don't want to make any promises, but I was going to make the entire thing from wood as opposed to being 3D printed, which is probably the better way to do it. Now, I showed this in my last video. I'm pretty sure. Well, I showed the second version in my last video. Unfortunately, I don't have the first one in here because I was using it yesterday to do some sanding here let me reach over there and get, get that one <laughs> drop it on the floor this is another one that uh, I made in the meantime like I said I'm looking for practice I want to be able to use the machine it was very much like the um, the CNC when I got that except I didn't use the CNC immediately. I waited quite a while actually before I used it. And then when I was using it, I was mainly doing stuff to, to learn it, you know, to learn what I can do. And same deal here. This thing you see here is what I'm calling the mini sanding block. Um, it uses one eighth of a sheet of sandpaper as opposed to the quarter sheet that this one uses. This one's much bigger as you can see. But the neat thing about this is that, okay, it's 100% 3D. You don't need any hardware. You take it off the printer bed, you put it together and it works. Okay, this swings up, the handle rotates like that. And when the handle rotates, these things, the grippers, I call them, they slide out and release the paper. So you can take the paper off. Okay, so you slide the paper out sideways like so and the gripper because the grippers have released it you can see here i'll try to get it in close to my face so the camera will focus but you can see how the grippers slide out when you uh, rotate the handle and then they slide back in and then this little lever here locks it in place so it can't rotate and release interesting to design stuff like this Okay, and then this one, I like I said, I showed this in the last video, but it works. This one works the same. This is all 3D printed, no hardware needed. It prints in um, in pieces that have to be glued together, though. This ergonomic grip, which is really comfortable to hold, uh, glues onto the middle handle part, which glues onto the uh, 
the frame. Okay, so this once again flips up like that. The thing slides side, sideways <laughs> and that falls out because once again, there's no hardware holding it in. I made this so that it would just slot in there. And once it's in there and pushed down, it doesn't come out because it's it's shaped like that. But yeah, it can fall out when it comes all the way up. So you gotta watch that. And then this part here is the pad, which doesn't have to be 3D printed, but I, I thought I would do it anyway. That fits down into the retaining frame. Okay. And the beauty of this sanding block is that it will not snag on anything. And that's really good. All right. And it can go in either way. Like uh, this is a little stiff because I haven't been using it. It can go either way. You know, it's symmetrical. Like so. And turn around, you know, in case you're you're feeling, you know, backwards one day, you can flip it around and continue sanding. What else? Uh, oh, yeah, the <laughs> the uh, hand screw clamp. Actually, um, this is not this is not the one that I show in the video. Well, the jaws are. I made the jaws in the video, but I these screws weren't in the video. I made these screws. I designed and made these screws yesterday and quickly put this thing together so that I could get a good picture. All right. I put it together in the wooden jaws first and then I put it together permanently in this one right here and I glued on the 3D printed handle. So everything you see here once again is 3D printed. No hardware needed. Just glue. Right. I used super glue this time for the threads, but I used construction adhesive to glue on the handles. And ideally, these would be keyed together. They would be printed so that when the handle slips on, it would be mechanically fastened to the handle. And then the glue would just hold it in place. But you'd be transferring the load directly. As opposed to the round hole that's in here now, and it's, you know, it relies 100% on the glue. That's not as strong. But like I said in the video, you you don't you, you don't use this thing for um, you know really serious clamping. Um, well, you can, and some guys do. But the times that I've used mine, the original one that I built in the past, is just to hold something, because it'll hold something. Say a box this size on edge, you clamp that onto the edge of the box, and then you clamp this down to the to the workbench. Right, and that holds it tight. So if I had a change to make with this kind of a clamp, because I'm not used to it, okay? This tightens it, obviously, and loosens it. But when you come to this one, this tightens it, but that's not tightening it, okay? That's, that's pushing the jaws apart. I think I would reverse this, the threading on this one. Just flip it around and put the part that sticks into the handle on the other end, right? So that when you tighten it, the jaw, these move apart. So that you could take this and you could do this and both jaws would come apart or go together. Okay? Instead of doing what they're doing right now, which is going in an opposite directions. And it's easy to do with 3D printing. All you need to do is mirror the parts and you get something that works in the opposite direction. It's awesome. And another thing I should say is that these fit perfectly, but the ones that I originally printed, those gray ones that I uh, left for several days covered with glue and couldn't unscrew the nuts from without grabbing them with the pliers. And I was afraid I would break the screws trying to get the nuts off and then made them all messy in the end that glue would not release from the surface. These fit better because I undersized this a little bit. So this is not, you know, you wouldn't use this for, for serious clamping. You would want to upsize this thread. And I don't know if this is a good screw pitch. It's certainly fast. Like this is a quarter inch screw pitch and just a few turns and you're closing the clamp. But the bigger the, the pitch, the less mechanical advantage you get from the inclined plane that a screw is. So you have to really reef on it to put the force on that you want. Whereas a finer thread, you'll get more force with less effort. 
it just takes longer to do. Okay. So yeah, that's where I'm at with this. How many more projects I'll have that involve 3D printing is really up to what I can think of. Okay. Because I'm hooked on it. And that won't be to say that I'm going to give up uh, woodworking and I'm not doing woodworking anymore. That's not the case. I'm slowing things down as it is, but you can expect to see more 3D printed parts in the project, but there won't be parts that I can't make or, you know, things that I can't do without it. But the thing is, this thing here is ending up in more woodworkers hands anyway. So it's something that I got or there's something that they want. They're planning on buying. So yeah, welcome to the future. The future is this, I think. Oh, it just occurred to me when I shut down the camera that there was something I meant to say that I forgot about. It was a few years ago. I'm not sure, maybe four years ago that I said there would come a day when the 3D printer would be good enough to generally replace you know, woodworking as a way for people to get their do-it-yourself fix, you know, a way to do something, to build something. I said it wasn't there then, and I really don't think it's there 100% now, but it's getting a lot closer. And what I said at the time is that, you know, woodworking is a skill-based uh, activity. As in, you have to develop a skills, like real physical skills to do woodworking to get good results. Whereas this has the skill built in, okay? Imagine making this exact thing from wood. It can be done, but you would require a lot of skill to do it. Now, designing skill is a different thing, okay? You still need the designing skill for both, but this machine takes a spool of plastic and it poos out something like this, parts or something like this that are perfectly shaped and fit perfectly together. And doing that with woodworking requires real skills that you have to develop and you can't do that overnight, or at least most people can't. It takes years to become a, a reasonably good woodworker. So yeah, this has a real future, I think. Oh, I also forgot to mention where I am. I'm in my new hobby room, which you can see is quite a mess because I finished gutting my office. This used to be my old office, all right? I moved all that editing stuff downstairs that you saw in the last video. And now I have this much space here to mess up. I moved everything in. Well, not everything, but mostly everything in. And I just put it here while I you know, continue my session with the, because I got these around about the same time. Okay. I started gutting my office and this thing arrived and distracted me from finishing that, but I eventually got it finished, got it freshly painted, all cleaned up and made this temporary workspace over here, moved other stuff in and, you know, moved all the stuff in as well. And I'm going to be cleaning this up and organizing it over the next month, but I'll be making videos from here, maybe from now on. I don't know. Another thing I wanted to mention is that I'm moving my shop. I talked about this a, a few videos ago. I'm moving my shop from my current shop into my much smaller shed. And I'm building a saw system that will replace my miter saw and my table saw. Okay. Two of my, two of the things I love the most in the world, I'm getting divorced from in favor of this new thing that I'm going to be mounted on the wall. And the reason why I'm doing this is because, well, okay, I'm moving into a phase of my life where I'm going to be doing less, you know, serious woodworking. I'm not, I'm not done with YouTube and making woodworking videos on YouTube, but I'm slowing things down. I don't need a, a bigger shop. And I need that garage back to park in and put the snowblower in. And also, it'd be a handy area to take photos of bigger projects because I don't have a place now to do that, right? My house is small. The rooms inside my house are small. And then there's stuff in there that I have to move and all that stuff and set up lighting. The shop already has good lighting. 
So I can leave this lighting in there. The, sh the shed actually has good lighting too, because when I put the walls in and all, like I fixed it up for metalworking a few years ago, I put good lighting in the stuff that was in my shop. Actually, I moved out there. I got four light fixtures up in the ceiling, lots of light. So good light out there, good light in the, what will be the, sh the garage for a place to set up to take photos or assembly. I like I'd have the whole summer with say the end of the garage to use for whatever I want to use it for. So that's my thinking there. And my biggest reason for mounting the saw on the wall, okay, space saving. The lesson I learned there was from putting my CNC machine on the wall though, because up until I put my CNC machine on the wall, it was constantly piled with clutter and I never used it. When I put it up on the wall, I immediately started using it and I've been using it over and over again since then. Well, at least until this came and then I started using this all the time. So yeah, putting the saw on the wall will solve a lot of problems for me. And to that end, I ordered these, I don't want to knock any of these piles over. I ordered these linear rails. Okay that you would have on a CNC. These will be on the on the bottom, two of these. These are one and a half meters long. That's around 60 inches. So a total of 120 inches long. All right, two on the bottom, two on the top. And then I got another two, the same, that will go vertical. That'll give me a, a meter and a half of vertical cutting distance. And I'm making it so that the carriage that goes vertical, that holds the saw, slide sideways, of course, to make rip cuts, you reposition the saw that's in there to make the rip cuts, or the saw can be oriented vertical to make cross cuts across a sheet or even a small piece, right? As in like a radial arm saw that's on the wall. Also, <laughs> uh, this is my plan because I went and I spent almost $400 on two new batteries for the DeWalt 60 volt, you know, the 60 volt batteries. I bought two of those in a pack. And the saws that I'm going to be using for this are the battery powered table saw that I have that's sitting out there in that shed and has been sitting out there in that shed since the last time I used it, which was around four years ago. And the Makita, not the Makita, the DeWalt miter saw that I put in my shop right now that's out there right now that replaced the Hitachi. So when I start making this thing, I'm going to take that DeWalt saw out, put the Hitachi back, which is just sitting on the floor there and use the, the Hitachi to make this wall saw contraption that I want out there. All right, I'm done this time for sure.